Rich on the home of the Woody Show. You know? No. Oh. Alt 98.7. All in or all out. LA's new alternative. If they ever pulled our internet history. The only thing that would really be good for me is if Brady would rub her feet on my face. Only fans. Maybe some of those toes go into my mouth. Yeah, put that in the foot folder. That would be fantastic. <laughs> this is the Woody Show. And we are into another new hour. Insensitivity training for a politically correct world. It's Monday. It's March 4th, 2024. Woody, Ravy, yes. Ray, Morning. Menace, Seabass, there's Sammy. Morning. Phones are open, 877-44-WOODY. That's 877-44-WOODY. You can hit us up with a text over to 22987. So drinking coffee first thing in the morning, not a good idea. Oh, no. When you wake up, your cortisol level is at its peak your primary stress hormone. You've heard about cortisol before, yes. right? That enhances alertness and focus. It also regulates your metabolism, your immune system response. And the thing is, when you drink coffee at that point, it does more harm than good, Greg. Well, I need it mentally, though. <laughs> and you could become immune to caffeine. Oh, I feel too late. like that's happened already. <laughs> We're all immune to caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> Cortisol follows a rhythm specific to your own sleeping cycle, and that explains why your energy peaks in the morning and you get more tired at night. So the best time to drink coffee, they say, is mid to late morning okay. when the cortisol levels have begun declining and you feel your first energy slump. So like for people with a regular schedule, yeah. if you wake up at 7 a.m., that might be 10 a.m. or noon. That's way wow. too long to wait. I know. So if the caffeine's not doing it for you, like what's the point of the coffee? I'm not... I'm not following that. It's a mental thing, right? You said. I think it's a mental thing. It's a ritual thing. I yeah. love the taste. I love the the hot I beverage. I just like drinking it. I love everything about it. Love the smell. When people say, "Oh, I drink a Coke and I get a buzz," I'm like, "What is that like?" Yeah, <laughs> get a buzz from a Coke. I know people do. That's how oh, sensitive a, some people are yeah. to caffeine. I get a crazy buzz from Coke. Really? Wow. Oh yeah, it must be That's nice. That's my go-to if I need energy because I rarely drink soda, and so for some reason the caffeine in the soda is different than when I'm having coffee. So if in the middle of the day I have soda, forget it. I'm off the walls. Wow, really? interesting. And you drink coffee black. I do. It's not yeah. like you're not a coffee drinker. Right. That's weird. Man. I have my first cup huh. of coffee about 45 minutes after I get up. So I'm, I'm thinking that's okay by science. Yeah. Your cortisol's yeah. declining. It, right. Mm-hmm. It's fine. God, I had something here somewhere. Speaking of uh, drinking a soda. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Okay. So according to a new study, drinking just two 12-ounce cans of soda per week Mm-hmm. That's nothing. A, a week can erase the health benefits you get from exercise. Oh my god, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> so is that like a that, rave? full sugar sodas? Is that what they're talking about? Yeah. So just two sugar sweetened beverages would cancel out <laughs> all your exercise. Is. All your exercise. Wow. Is that your takeaway? Just don't exercise then. And they say <laughs> that pretty much. artificially sweetened drinks. Yeah. Don't have as much of a negative impact, but scientists are urging consumers to drop cane and sugar-based sodas altogether. Oh, mm. man. I just bought four 12-packs <laughs> of Coke. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah. Like oh, regular, straight up ones? non-diet. Oh, wow. You're off the wagon, dude. I know. Yeah. This is for uh, uh-huh. adults over 30 who work out 150 minutes every week. Yep, yep. Just two 12-ounce cans of soda would just erase all Derails that. Derails yeah. all that. And this is what... I think I, this is what just keeps people discouraged. And they go, well, forget it. Well, then yeah. F it. Yeah. I want my yeah. Coke. I don't know. I've grown to love all the sugar-free zeros. Yeah. Right? I know, yeah, but then... At least that's something versus v- the regular. And I know it's just as bad, but it's, that's a, what little, I'm saying. The anti, it's a little less bad. The anti-soda <laughs> people... They will tell you that that is just as bad, if not worse. It is. It has cancer-causing agents, guys. I will say, I gave up soda for Lent when I was in high school, and I lost 10 pounds almost, I mean, by the time Lent was over. Wow. I believe it. But when you gave up full-on, full, yeah. like, sugar sodas. Also, you gave not up happiness. <laughs> yeah, because skinny people don't drink diet mm, sodas. That's right. Too. Fat people are drinking diet sodas. Skinny people drink. Yeah, but that's like diet diet. I'm talking about zeros. Right. I'm right. saying when we did the fat chick, skinny chick game, and yeah. for those of you who never heard us play that game, like we'd get a volunteer and uh, on the phone, and they would send us over a picture, which none of us had seen yet, just like one of the producers, mm-hmm. and then we'd ask them a bunch of questions like, uh, do you drink regular or diet soda? 
Do you have a gym membership? Different mm-hmm. things. Because it was interesting, the people who didn't have a gym membership and the people who drank regular soda, they were always the skinny people. Always then. Didn't have to worry mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. yeah. Like Locked skinny in. people don't think about it, so they'll they'll have a regular soda because it doesn't matter. Whereas like, you know, fatties like me, like you're, you're like, oh well why why add more calories to the mix? I'll just have the the big fat meal. Yeah. But a diet but soda. But zero calorie bev. Yeah. Right. I think if you're worried about weight in any way, just don't drink soda at all. Mm. Diet or otherwise. But it's so yeah, good. Right. It is so good. Now at the same time, uh every time I've lost weight, seventy pounds, mm-hmm. you know, sixty pounds, I've drank soda the entire time. But it's always diet. Mm-hmm. And I do understand what they're saying, uh, and the reason that because there's it's zero calorie, but the the reason behind it is because it's still triggering, like the artificial sweetener still triggers like the the sweetness, like craving. Yeah, that it makes you, you get. hungry. That's and it'll what they it'll say. it'll make you crave other sugary sweet mm-hmm. things. So if you have a sweet tooth or whatever, now see the the key is. Avoiding that stuff. Yeah. So you could drink the diet soda and you could stay on an otherwise healthy diet and exercise and everything else. And then, yes, you will lose weight. Easy. But if you <laughs> cave to if you cave to the uh the craving. The craving yeah. that the artificial sweeteners yeah. will create, well then of course you got a problem. Yeah. That's not the artificial sweeteners, the fact that you ate all those cookies. Well don't be no <laughs> punk then. Don't be no punk. Yeah, just don't be a punk. <laughs> is the advice you Menace def- is giving. <laughs> you won't yeah. defeat me, Cookie. Yeah. I have power over you. But let me tell you, man. I'm not going to eat a bucket of cookies. <laughs> you know, you hear stories all the time about people that get lung cancer. They've never smoked a day in their life. You know, so yeah. mm-hmm. this whole thing of like, oh, well, there's cancer causing whatever. Like, it, it, dude, everything. Filling up your car with gas. They say, well, oh, you know, it's been known to cause cancer. Uh, the cancer that cancer that. It's like, sure. you know, what are you doing? Hiking who is Who is living cancer. a life of any kind? That is completely avoiding all the things that could potentially give you cancer. The wow. most fun people out there. No, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Because everything. Maybe a hermit in the mountains. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Your cell phone. My mom, never, uh, my mom never smoked a day in her life. Got cancer. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And was a, it, it is, she's healed. She's still here. Um, a healthy person, like a healthy lifestyle person. Right. And then you have smokers who live to be 98. Right. You never know. Yeah. So... I figure, like, yeah, I'm going to try to do the best I can right. with how I'm feeling in the moment. Okay. So if I want a soda, I'm going to have a soda. Agreed. You know? Because you hear a lot yeah. about work-life balance. What about just life-life balance? Yeah. You got to have some joy. You got to have four 12-packs <laughs> yeah. of Coke right. in your yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking, like, and I know this guy had cancer, too, but Chris Mortensen yep. from uh, ESPN reported on the NFL for, like, three decades. With ESPN, he died yesterday. He was only seventy-two. Throat cancer. He had throat cancer. Oh God, damn. You know, and uh, you know, I forget who else died recently, and then they were way younger than I thought they were. And it's like, man, you know, just just live your life. Yeah, live life and party. Mm-hmm. You know, just live enjoy it. it. Not be completely reckless. Exactly. But, you know, everybody's like, "Well, I'm not touching that. I'm not touching this." It's like, wow, how boring. I know. Have your coffee when you wake up. Right, like I don't care where my cortisol is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm it. drinking it. Right. I gotta have it. <laughs> right. Today this is bad for you. Tomorrow they're like, oh well, you should definitely eat more. definitely drink you coffee first thing. Right. What do, you, what do you mean you're not having nine eggs? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was two eggs a week 